Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church. It is so good to see y'all here. Glad you joined us this morning. Church don't get you to heaven, but it sure don't hurt either. Sherman's in the booth. Sherman's in the... Uh-oh. Hey, what's up? We... <laughs> He's running the camera. <laughs> Alpha, Bravo, Whiskey, Tango. Yes. All right, we're going to do the... Uh, we're going to start things off with a song. Sing along if you want to. And, uh, or just say hi to your neighbors, whatever you need to do to get into the mood and the mindset and the heart set to worship our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's, let's sing this one together. Me and Jesus, we got our own thing going. Me and Jesus, we got it all worked out. Me and Jesus, we got our own thing going. We don't need to tell us what it's all about I know a man and what was sinner I know a man that once was a drug I know a man that once was a loser he went out one day and made an altar out of a stone me and Jesus so true it's all about relation man it's you got people it has to be church it has to be done this way and everybody look at me look what I'm doing look how religious. no it's about a relationship with you and him and it's nobody else's call it's nobody else's decision that's between you and Jesus that's why I love that song people ask me say why do you sing that song in church because you know it's Tom T. Hall and it's honky tonk it's the message that it is salvation is between you and your Savior. That's what I get out of that. And I hope y'all get out of that as well. Same thing. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and, and that's the beautiful thing, isn't it? That, that, man, whatever you got going on this morning, Jesus will meet you right there with it, right? Amen. And we Amen. come to church. We come to worship him. We come to lift him up. But most importantly, we come or wherever we're at, whether it's here in church this morning or wherever it may be, we can go straight to God with our problems, with our situations, with whatever's going on in our life. Even if it's good things, right? We can go and we can celebrate with him. Uh, and so we are so thankful to see each and every one of you this morning. Welcome to church. And uh, before I pray, I wanted to read this couple of verses. We read this in Sunday school this morning. And then uh, the message today is about the goodness of God. And I thought this would go. And it wasn't on his list of verses. So I'm going to read this one too to add to it. Um, but it's in Titus chapter 3. It says, But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. I'm so thankful for the goodness of God this morning and what he has done for us. Amen. Amen. Let's, go to, let's go in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, God, for who you are, Lord. We are so thankful for all that you've done for us, Lord. We're thankful for this church and this building that we can come together as believers and we can come and give our burdens to you, God. We can give our hardships, we can give our trials, depression, our anxieties, our good things, God. Whatever it is that's going on in our life, we can give it to you. God, you know everything about us and you just want us to give it all over to you. 
And God, so that you can work it out for us. Lord, we're so thankful for an opportunity we get to come together and to worship your holy name, to lift up your name and, and worship God and to be fed uh, through the message, Lord. We just ask for, for guidance through the message today, Father, and that you will give us hearts to open up and to receive what you have for us this morning. And God, we love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I mean, anytime, anybody, hey, if you're sitting out here and you're thinking, man, I would love to sing, but I don't know who to talk to. If you are feel led to ever come up here and sing a song, please, by all means, there's no gates on the sides of these stairs here. There's no block. If you feel led to sing, come up, sing with us, sing by yourself, whatever you're feel led to do, don't deny that blessing from God that he's trying to put on your heart. But we'll get her up here next week. Byron, you turn my mic off. <laughs> <laughs> Start again. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. privilege he has afforded us to be able to raise that hallelujah and to worship him. It's, it's 
amazing. Some parts of the world you get arrested, you get incarcerated, you're beat, shot, killed. You got to ask yourself, what are they so afraid of? People say, oh, God's not real. It's not. Then what are they so afraid of? Because they know deep down inside that there's a Savior. And they know that he loves you. And they can't stand to let that pride go. That, that pride holds them back. No, I'm the master of my destiny. I take care of myself. We can't do anything without God, y'all. He is the master of everything. in the wrong key. Sorry. Uh, got to talking. Key. I know the old man strikes again. Tisk, I know. Tisk, tisk, tisk. <laughs> well, I'm satisfied with just a kind of below a little silver and a little gold but in that city Will the ransom will shine I want a gold one That silver line I got a mansion Just over the hilltop In that bright land Where we'll never grow old And some beyond sounds so good this morning singing along with us. We love it. Sing nice and loud.
asked if we would do this song today for his message he's going to give and so many people sing it so many different ways and I just really hadn't found a way yet so we just do it <laughs> but I hope you find the love in this song because it's just it's it is a praise praise song group participation <laughs> yes everybody join so in on just this sing it how you like to sing it <laughs> stand if you want to you don't have to stand Amen. if you don't Raise want to, to just... God go to the Lord in prayer. Most holy God, we're gathered here this morning to worship you, to study your word, and to do whatever it's that you would have us to do. Father, our lot in life is to be more like Jesus, and we, we need to have a heart for the lost. As your children, we should love, enough, love others and love enough to tell them about the gift of salvation. Father, no one 
we, we don't want anyone to end their life not knowing Jesus. We pray for those that are going through some difficult times, those that are in the middle of heartache, and those who just cannot find inner peace. Father God, I pray that you'll, that they'll give their bur burdens to you and that they will ac accept the peace that you will give. In Jesus' name, amen. Her story this week about a woman that her husband was a preacher. So she went and told him one day, she, she said, I want to give you some advice on making, doing your sermons, getting them ready. And he said, okay. And he said, she said, do this. She said, remember the washing machine commercial when you're doing your, your sermons, when you're preparing. And he looked at her real funny and she said, what are you talking about? And she said, it says in the commercial, after it spins dry, it shuts itself off automatically. So I'm assuming that uh, he might have been a little long-winded. Aren't y'all glad you don't have to deal with long-winded? Oh, me. Heard another one went to the doctor's office. Yeah, he went to the doctor's office. The doctor's going to take his temperature. And after he took the instrument out of the preacher's mouth, he looked at the preacher and he said, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I, I accidentally used a barometer instead of a thermometer. And he said, it's reading dry and windy. <laughs> hmm. Sometimes they work good, sometimes they don't. Uh, have you ever found yourself in situations where you felt like you were running from something? I have many times. Possibly it's a feeling that you're being followed. Maybe it's a re that you just have a fear of being caught or, or captured in whatever it is that's following you. And, and like I say, I can't speak for anybody here but me, but I've found myself in that position many times on many occasions. I asked Mandy and Mike in the, in the worship group to sing this song for a purpose. And this, this verses of that song is going to be a big part of our message today. So I want to read just a little bit. Of the, uh, of the verses of goodness of God. They just sang them. Said, I love you, Lord. Your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the f moment I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Isn't it wonderful, friends, to know that God pours out his mercy on us? And, and you... you he poured it out on us even before we loved him. You realize that? He loved us before we loved him. From the time we wake up in the morning till, the, till we go to bed at night, God is continually, his mercy is showering goodness upon his people. And you ask the question sometime, and I ask it often, why would God have so much mercy on a bunch of sinners? It's found it throughout the Bible. There's one place I wanted to look at this morning that tells us. It's found in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. It says, because of his great love for us. There it is. You can underline that. Uh, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. There you had it. Because of God's love for us. God's mercy is available to every single person. Every person that's ever been born, that mercy is for them. It's there for them. For those of us that have already placed our trust in the Lord, we should be doing exactly what the psalmist tells us in Psalm 145, 7. It says they, and that would be us, they will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. How often do we truly celebrate that? 
that we truly celebrate and have a, and joyfully sing about God's mercy and his goodness. Don't we take it for granted sometime? I believe we do. But however often we do it is not enough. We should do it more and more and, and do it constantly. Back to the song verse, it says, All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In the darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as father. I've known you as friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. Now, I won't ask for a show of hands because I know it's everyone in here that has been through a fire of some description. Maybe you've been found in a place that seems so dark that you didn't think it was possible that you would ever see the light again. Find yourself in a place where you think escape is impossible. And there's no doubt we could go around the room and every hand would go up and say, yes, that's happened to me. It could be the loss of a spouse, the loss of a child, maybe some uh, sin from your past. That may be the hardest thing for Christians to get the hang of is that God died for our sins and we want to hang on to them. We want to, we want to keep whipping ourselves with them. But something you can't let go of maybe. It could be a, a diagnosis in a, in a family, maybe, of an illness. Maybe it's, a, a, maybe it's you. Maybe you've got the diagnosis. Maybe it's a broken home. There's so many things that it could be. And there's so many things in this imperfect world that we live in that hurl you immediately into darkness. Sometimes they'll come up on you slowly, but sometimes they just come up on you instantly. It's a horrible place to be, lonely, depressed, anxious, fearful. My friends, we must never, ever give up hope, ever. Jesus gave us the most glorious promise that he could give us. When we're going through troubling things, that promise is always there. John 16, put this in your memory bank. I have told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. How comforting is that verse to us? How comforting should it be? The Lord wishes for us to have peace. What better way to extend peace than to know our worldly problems firsthand and then know that he has already overcome any problems that you're facing today. We'll look at the psalmist again and get some more encouragement. Psalms 31 19 says, How great is your goodness which you have stored up for those who fear you, which you bestow in the sight of men on those who take refuge in you. The goodness of God. The goodness of God is available to all who follow him. The goodness of God is there for our taking. It's available to anyone and everyone who will seek refuge in his life. Back to the verse it says, the, the song verse it says, All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because your goodness is running, it's running after me. Your goodness is running, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running. 
is running after me. I don't know the person that wrote that verse in that song. But when I was reading that verse, and I've heard them sing it before, but it dawned on me that this is my verse in the song. This is about my life in this verse. Many of you have heard my testimony before. If you have, I hope you'll bear with hearing it one more time. Honestly, I was not a good person at all. I cared about one thing. Me. I had a God in my life. I had a God in my life that consisted of 14 clubs and a white ball. And that's exactly what it was. The only thing in my life that I could think of at that time was I wanted to be the best there was. Not the best Christian there was. I wanted to be the best golfer in this part of the country. I loved my family. But they were secondary to God. Every day I practiced. I practiced either in my yard or I practiced on the driving range. Every day after work. Every spare moment I had was one of two things. I was either playing or I was thinking about playing. Saturday mornings, Sunday mornings, when I should have been in church somewhere, I beat everybody to the driving range. I was there when the sun come up, practicing for that day's round of golf. I got good. I got very good. Won a few tournaments. Set a nine-hole record at one of the toughest courses around here. I'd fallen deeply in love with my God. With the little G. I was pleasing him greatly. Then something happened. All those accolades that I were getting from my opponents and telling me how good I was. One day something happened and it meant nothing. It was nothing any longer. Something happened to me. For a few months I'd rocked along and I didn't feel just right. If you get my feeling there. I couldn't put my finger on what it was. I didn't know what it was. Physically I was in good shape. Probably the best shape I'd been in in many years. Mentally was an entirely different story. I felt like that I was running from something or from somebody. And I didn't understand. But there, there was a period of time came along that I could be anywhere. I could be at home and a door, one of the kids slam a door. And I just freeze. Somebody could honk a horn when I was outside. I would just freeze. It was, I was on such an edge. Anything I wasn't expecting hit me hard and it just, it froze me. One Saturday morning in 2002, I don't know the exact date, but I know the exact place. And I know it was on a Saturday morning. I got up before daylight Gathered up my clubs, put them in my truck, and off I went. Same as I had done a thousand times before. All was just fine. I was playing the holes over in my mind, getting my strategy ready for how I was going to play the course that day. Y'all know exactly where I'm talking about if you've ever been to Quitman on 182. You got the two quick corners and then you come to the top of the hill and the dam's off to the left and you go down to the flat. Well, about the time I got down to the flat, honestly, I can't, I've tried to explain this to people, but it felt like at that point that somebody poured a 55-gallon drum of scalding hot oil that went the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. I pulled over to the shoulder of the road. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't think. 
I didn't know if I'd had a stroke. I didn't know if I was having a heart attack. I didn't know what was going on. Truthfully, I didn't. I don't remember going back home. Somehow I made it. I lay down on the couch that day. As soon as I got back, and it was still before daylight, or pretty close to it anyway. But I lay down on the couch, and I just knew that the family would find me dead. There would be no question I'd be dead on that couch. I woke up probably an hour, and to this day, I don't know if it was a dream. I don't know just what it, I know who it was, but I don't know what it was. But the instant I woke up, my little brain was telling me, you better get back in church. Well, rest assured that the next morning, I was in church. And it didn't fall in, as some people will think, if you hadn't been to church in a long time, they'll come in and say, I hope it doesn't fall in on us. It didn't fall in that way. Doesn't quite end right there, though. You know, your little mind, you can trick yourself if you want to. But I was scheduled to play the next weekend in a, in a pretty big tournament here in East Texas. I made a deal with God. I told God, I said, you let me go on and I'll play that golf and I'll give all the glory to you. In my mind, that was cool. Everything was good. Get to the course, warm up, everything's feeling good. I'm feeling like a new man. Boy, I've, I'm, I'm following the Lord now. Now I'm doing what the Lord, I'm playing golf the way the Lord wants me to play. Well, anyway, got to the second hole that day. Probably the greatest I'd ever played. You know, two, a hole and a half. I'm up there and I'm, for you golfers, it's, you, you survey the putt to see which way it's going to break and try to visualize it going in the hole. And I was doing all that. And it came to me like a bolt of lightning that I might be cool lining up that putt on Sunday morning. Actually, it was a Saturday. But I was lining up that putt, and God didn't think it was that cool. I picked up my golf ball. Told my playing partners I was withdrawing. And I never played again. Nothing wrong with playing golf. Don't get me wrong. I know this has been a long, but I wanted to set it up with this. Here's what I finally discovered in all that. All those years. Wasted. Looking back on it, wasted. It wasn't evil that had been chasing me. Not at all. Wasn't evil that was scaring me. Not at all. In fact, it wasn't a bad thing at all. It was the goodness of God that had been chasing me. And it's the goodness of God that charged after me and saved me. This verse that I want to read is, explains it better than I can. Exodus 33, 19. This is how I feel about it. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. And I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. It was God the whole time. I thought Satan was pouring water over me. I thought Satan was the one that was giving me such a hard time. No, it wasn't. I'd been running from God all my life. I'd been running from what God had planned in my life. And I'll tell you right now, and I'll probably tell you again before I finish, every one of you in here, God has a plan for your life. You can run as long as you want to. But the more you run, the tougher it's going to be on you. 
But his, he was passing his goodness. His goodness he was passing in front of me. And I was ignoring it. He showered me with mercy and grace all those years that I didn't care. I didn't, I didn't want to be in a church house. I wanted to be out in the open getting good at some trivial game. I couldn't see. I was blind. Totally blind. I was blinded by ambition and I was blinded by pride. And the Bible tells us that those two things are not good. God was waving a flag of compassion in front of me and my eyes were so, had the scales on them so bad that I could not see what he was doing. The Lord was trying to catch me. The Lord wanted to pour his grace, mercy, and love. He was ready to pour it out to me just as he is to each one of us. I'm nothing special. I'll tell you that right now. But when, when you realize that he's covered your sins, past, present, and future, and, and he turned my heart and my conviction in a totally different direction at that point, it took what I thought was a near-death experience because I promise you I didn't think I would wake up from that nap. How many of you, I know most of you have, you seen the picture that there's a door and Jesus is standing outside that door just... You notice there's no doorknob. He's, he's knocking on your heart. That symbolizes your heart. He's knocking on that heart door. And he's doing it very light. And I was ignoring the person at the door. I didn't want to go answer the door. So, when you don't answer the door, when God wants you to answer the door, and he's got something planned for you, and you're not doing it, and he's got something planned for everybody to do, the Lord Jesus himself decided that I needed a Saul on the Damascus Road experience. And that instant changed my life. I can take you to the exact stripe in the road on Highway 182 of where it happened. That light, gentle no, knock he was doing was, I wasn't paying attention to it. But it changed my life, thank God. Now, let me say this. I'm still an old sinner saved by grace. Still there. Every day, we lean on him. Two verses I wanted to share with you, and they both fit me, and I, I believe them to the bottom of my heart. One's in 1 Timothy 1.15. Here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. In Ephesians 3, 8, he writes again. He says, although I am less than the least of all God's people, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Friends, I'm humbled and I'm blessed to be pastor at Amazing Grace. I love it here. I love my church family. Do I make mistakes? Yeah, daily. Every day. When I started feeling, I'm going to say that it's within a year of when we, I got back, we got back in church, I started feeling another calling that I was supposed to be a minister. And I'm like, God, really? You really? Really? And I think about my dad, for y'all that know my dad. 
I can see dad walking up to Jesus and of course he's doing the humble before the Lord like he is but then he looks up and says you sure you got the right son <laughs> my brothers forgot more about the Bible than I'll ever know but he don't like to talk as much as I do I guess he learned early in life that if you didn't talk you didn't get in trouble I'm still working on it but when I seriously when I got called to the ministry I felt the calling I wanted to put my golf shoes on and run again that was my thought but thank the goodness of God took care of this fool that you look at this morning and he gave me a new purpose he gave me a new hope in life and it's available to all of us because we all are there we should never get to the point where we think, oh, I'm saved. Well, I can sit back now and kick back and watch the world go by. I'm not going to mess your salvation up, but it sure is not a way to, to feel because we should always want to minister to everyone. The song, the song verse goes on. It says, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. When I give a t my testimony a lot of times, and I've done it several times over the years, but my greatest hope is that it might get you to thinking and might keep you from making the same mistakes that I made over the years. And I'm going to go a little side sidestep here for just a second. The two verses that I did earlier, I loved what Paul said in his writings. There is nothing that gets on my nerves. Well, I won't say that. There's things that gets on my nerves. But these preachers, these preachers that go into churches, or you see them on TV, and they are looking down. And they're up here. Hey, this is God up here speaking to y'all. You know the ones I'm talking about. They drive me insane. Folks, look. I am no different. The guy gets behind this pulpit cannot be any different than anybody else. And I always, that's one of the two verses and that's why I kind of, I, I can relate with Paul a little bit because he, 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 he's saying I wasn't, I'm not the most polished speaker on earth. He's saying that, that I'm the chief. He didn't say I'm the chief over a bunch of sinners. What he said was is I am the chief sinner of the bunch. That's the attitude we need to have. The last thing that we need to do as Christians is have a better than, a holier than thou attitude toward anyone, especially to the unsaved. We are humbled. We are saved by the grace of God. I just hope this testimony this morning and this will, will help you to get rid of any little G's, little gods that you might have in your life. God has a plan. God has a purpose. He's going to get you there one way or the other. Don't go as long as I did and don't, you won't have to suffer the grief that came during all that. If you're not saved, and I know that every church you go to, every preacher you've ever heard, well, except the ones that are preaching for dollars, They'll, they'll say, right now is a perfect time for you to be saved. So I'm going to say it too. If you're not saved, right now is the perfect time for you to get saved. If you're saved, don't think, and you have to be very careful. You have to watch constantly. Don't let one of them little gods, the little G, slip back into your life. You've got to keep them out. You've got to be aware of them. You've got to cut them off. For the rest of my earthly life, as long as I have one breath left in this body, this is what I'm going to do, and I hope that you'll join me. I'm going to sing 
I'm going to sing. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing the goodness of God. I'm going to sing the goodness of God. If you would, if you'd stand.